Hello again and welcome to the Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into today's video, I want to say a huge thank you to Alfonso Valdez, I hope I am pronouncing your name correctly, for sending in these very cool pictures of his Imperial Fists storming a traitor guard trench line. Very cool. As you guys know, I am a big fan of the Sons of Dawn. I have a big big black templar army and i uh, yeah look there's something cool about the imperial fists and their descendants the sons of dawn the crimson fists the black templars they're very cool this is some absolutely fantastic action shots so thank you very much for sending in these pictures alfonso really really cool really appreciate the time you've taken to send these in to me if anyone else has any cool pictures they'd like to send in for me to use my videos please post them on my facebook page there'll be a link down in the description below now Let's get on with today's video. Now, it's going to be a bit of a continuation. You're going to see a bit of a theme with this week's videos, uh, which, you know, has been like sort of mind games. And we're going to be, and that, the reason this is going to lead us quite well into next week's videos, but what we're going to be talking about today, because I don't want to give away too much. Now, I've, I've literally got planned like 10 videos here, guys. Um, what, what, uh, what we're going to talk about today is we're going to revisit the concept of putting the voodoo into your opponent, playing mind games with your opponent, demoralizing them to the point where they no longer want to play, where people concede. And you get this a lot, you know, even in tournament games, almost as, sounds crazy, but you'd think in tournaments people would fight to the bitter end, wouldn't you? Right? You'd think they would, because, you know, every point matters in the tournament. That's what I'm like. But many people don't. Many people think there's no way the game can, can turn around. Sometimes they're right, but often they're not. I've, I've turned games around. Um, and so they give up because, and there's a number of reasons they do this. One, they're under a time limit. They can't be bothered rushing or, or you know, if they think they've been smashed, you know, just get the game over with, go on to the next one. Uh, often they're tired, especially if you're doing a two-day tournament. Maybe six games across two days, a pretty, you know, a proper, a, a good tournament. People will, you know, by sort of, oh, fucking hell, I've got another day of this. So th last game on the third day, I want to go home. Or it's the last game on the second day, and I really just want to go home. Um, you know, that, that is, that, there's a lot of things which will make competitive players just, just give up. Oh, I can't be bothered. Uh, whereas in fun games, if you think about it, people often may just, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll fight on to the end. I'll just do that wacky maneuver. I'll just do that glorious charge. <laughs> So this is, you know, it, it, it doesn't quite work the way everyone thinks it is, you know, and often you can get competitive players to give up. And the way you do that is by putting the voodoo into them. And one of the best lines, and when you, you know when you've put the voodoo into them, and I'll explain where this expression comes from because it's a bit of a dodgy one. It comes from the film Predator 2. Okay. And it, so, so if you haven't seen it, go and watch it. It's a classic goofy 90s movie fantastic and there's a scene when these two uh these, these this one drug gang i think it's the uh the jamaicans are raiding uh the 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 headquarters of a, the colombian drug gang and they and they catch the um they catch the colombian drug lord with his pants you know with his pants down and um, they 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 kill him, and but, but they don't just kill him. What they do is they like put like voodoo paint on him and everything, and they make it this whole ritual before they kill him, because they want to send a message to the rest. You know, they want they want to they want to scare the, they want to scare the rival drug gang so much that they don't demoralize them so much that they they don't want to get involved in this uh, drug war anymore, and they want to make them give up. So they put, and, and the guy, and, and the, uh, and so the Jamaican leader's like, I'm going to put the, I'm, I'm going to put the voodoo into you. And it's, 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 it's fucking voodoo magic. That's what he says. And that's where, and that's where this, this is where this expression that I, I use in my, in my gaming group, you know, I'm going to put the voodoo into them. That's where it comes from. You, you know, you're putting this, you're putting the scare, you put the fear into them. So uh, that, that's the origins of it. Now, there's there's lots of different ways you can put the voodoo. You can make your opponent give up. But there's two principal 
ways of making this work. Okay, the first one is by doing a horrendous amount of damage to your opponent. Okay, really smashing him. Now, we've many of us have been on the receiving end of certain alpha strikes. And that is the point of an alpha strike. It smashes you so hard that you you just don't you just you just demoralize. It's, you know half of the alpha strike is is damaging you. It's damaging your model. You know your army. The other half is damaging your mind and making you want to give up. Okay, so that's why a lot of alpha strike armies people don't like playing against them. But they once they've spent the alpha strike, it can be generally quite easy to to counterattack, and they can be glass hammers. Genes of Occult are a good example of this. They will come in turn two, and they will they will do a lot of damage to you. But if you can survive that, and if you can mentally survive that, then they will crumble very quickly. Okay? So that so 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 that's but that's one way of doing this. So that's part one is doing an incredible amount of damage to your opponent. But that's obvious. That is obvious, and we all know that. We've all been on the receiving end of that, and we've all done that to our opponents. We have smashed them so hard. We've killed, we've cleared the entire area. We've killed anything with more than two legs. We've made them want to give up. The second part is the most important, though. Okay, and it's more subtle. Okay, it's because you might do an incredible amount of damage to your opponent, but then if he counterattacks and does an incredible amount of damage to you, his spirits are actually going to get buoyed. He's actually going to feel, he's making a comeback. Yeah, I can do it. The key is to deny him that feeling. And it's quite sinister, this. You know, it's quite dark. The key is to deny your opponent any sense of joy and progress that he is making. Okay? To make him feel like he has damaged, you, you know, he has been damaged and in return he hasn't done enough. Okay, the key and the way you do that with Imperial Guard is to have a total and utter disregard for your casualties. This is why pure infantry Imperial Guard, if you can, if you're a fast enough player and you can take it to a tournament, in my opinion, this is why pure infantry Imperial Guard remains and has remained for a very long time the most competitive army loadout for the Imperial Guard. Okay, pure infantry, because not only can you deliver an absolutely overwhelming amount of firepower, especially in 8th edition, now that las guns can wound everything and we can get 1st rank fire, 2nd rank fire on an absolutely horrific amount of units and we can really just throw buckets and buckets and buckets of dice at our opponent. Now, that the key is that, that when you do that, is when your opponent starts scything your guardsmen down to just, to just not let it phase you. On the outside, as, as, at the very least, on the outside, just not phase you. Your opponent might be like, oh yeah, just killed 40, 50 Imperial Guard. You're, the key to it is just to make an offhand comment. I've spoken about this before. So an offhand comment, ah, oh, acceptable casualties. Ah, oh, plenty more where they came from, drop in the ocean. Or if your opponent does, it, does like, kills like, four, let's say you've got like 200 Guardsmen, which is the minimum you should have for running a pure infantry army. I tend to run 250. And your opponent kills 50 guys, and he's feeling quite good about it. You go, yeah, that's about right. That's what, yeah, that's within acceptable. That's acceptable. Yeah, that's about that's about what, what I expected to lose. And suddenly, your opponent's like, oh, shit, I thought I'd done really well. I thought I'd gone above and beyond then. You know, that's, what he, that's what your opponent, you know, he's, and you've like killed, you've done a decent chunk of damage to him. And suddenly he's thinking, I didn't do any damage back. You know, actually, when he thinks about it, yeah, flip it, I've killed 50 guys, there's another 200 to go. There's 200 more bloody guys to go. And suddenly he starts giving up. And suddenly, what your opponent starts seeing is his models getting removed, but it just doesn't feel like he's draining the enemy army. Now, how you, how, this, is, this is the next level bit, guys, okay? Now, force concentration is very important, but... What you can do is when you first deploy your army, have your men quite tightly bunched up in ranks. If you want to see a good example of this, I'm giving you lots of examples to go to today. Go and look at my pure infantry guard versus Tau gun line battle report. Okay? And that's where 200 and I think 220 guardsmen, 222 guardsmen 
charge down a tau gun line with not a lot of cover in between and spoiler alert they win okay now good if you look at this right i start off the game very very bunched up very bunched up but as i start taking casualties i start spreading my men out a bit more okay so i'm losing men but it looks like every time a, a, a gap is made, it's just filled again. And it looks like my opponent is not making as... Now obviously, the ranks are thinning. And by the end of the game, I am very thin on the ground. But there's this point where my opponent makes a, a key mistake and you know targets the wrong unit. And that's because... He, he, and he even says it at the end, I shouldn't have done that, I shouldn't have done that. That was the voodoo getting to him. I've just got to kill them. I've just got, I've just got to do something. You know, and that's the key to it. You know, and to be fair, there's nothing he could have done. I put my opponent in a catch-22. If you see the battle report, you'll, you'll see what I mean. But that's the key. My total and utter disregard for my own casualties. Combined with the fact that I was doing consistent damage to him. Meant, and this is not, this, you know, my, that opponent was very used to facing the guard. So the voodoo didn't quite work, but it still worked a little bit. But um, but that's how you do it. That is the key. The first part, doing damage to your opponent, is obvious. Anyone can work that out. The way the guard win, the way the guard do it better than anyone else, is the ability to have a complete and total disregard for the lives of the men under your command. There are always more guardsmen available. Okay, always more. Now you can combine this voodoo of endless waves of guardsmen with things like a good beta strike by scions. Okay, sometimes sending waves and waves and waves of guardsmen at the enemy uh, can work, but some armies these days do have the firepower to just to do that. S sometimes you need to tip your opponent over the edge, make him reach a breaking point. Scions are good at doing that. A little sort of 30 man scion drop, three command squads, with three commanders and three squads of regular scions, all loaded out with plasma and melter. It will set you back maybe 500, well, maybe not even that much. Let's just work it out. Let's work it out. You know, I haven't done this in a while. So you've got, uh, how many scions do you have? You've got four times three plus 15. Okay, times that by nine for the amount of points. And then uh, 45, 45, 45. Uh, and then lots and lots of plasma guns. So 13 times 12. It's not even 13 anymore, is it? Uh, well, it's less. It's less than this, but whatever. Oh, I've done it wrongly. Anyway, uh, I've done it wrongly. Fuck it. It's. I can't. I can't work it out. <laughs> uh, it's about. I think it's going to come to about 300 points. I'm going to just. I am. You know what? I am going to. I am going to work it out. 30 times. Nine times. Twelve plus fifteen times nine plus it's it's eleven points of plasma gun these days, isn't it? So forty four, forty four, forty four, and then um, again twenty two, twenty two, twenty two, and then I think that's one hundred and forty four points, and you need three commanders. Yeah, 576 points, roughly. And I might have got the sums wrong there. It's going to set you back about 600 points for that. So that's a lot of guardsmen. But that's 30 bodies, so it's still a decent chunk. What that will do is that will deep strike down, and a and you can deep strike these down in, in various points, and you can just obliterate your opponent. That is a lot of plasma. So that's 18, what, more than that, maybe? 18 plasma, 18 plasma guns all in rapid fire range with extra shots that's going to do a huge amount of damage and that helps you put the shock into your opponent and also even if he deals with those sounds we've talked about your you know target priority dictating the flow you see how these things work together so if, even when your opponent deals that suddenly the guardsmen are on him the waves upon waves of regular guardsmen and he gets voodooed and he gives up and when you know when your opponent starts giving up when you go this is the immortal line this is when you've got them okay when they go this is bullshit 
When your opponent says something along those lines, you've got them. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. Thank you for listening, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. And of course, let me know your voodoo tactics. And especially, of course, I'll see you guys next time.